Along Came a Dog by Meander Dijon. Copyright 1958. Chapter 1. The Man Who Talked to Animals. The man was in the chicken coop. It was early on a Sunday morning in April. Daylight had not yet come to the farm and the makeshift chicken coop up in the horse barn above the empty horse stables was dim and dark and the chickens were still sleeping on the roost. The man's stirring about the darkness awakened the chickens. A whole row of white chickens with the big rooster in their middest rows up on the roost pole peered, peered, nervous and unseen at the shadowy man. Then, a little red hen squeezed out of a long white row, hopped down from the roost pole to in front of the edge of the roost and opened her wings as if to fly out, as, as if to fly out to the man. She did not quite trust herself to make the plunge into the darkness over the floor. She weaved and teetered a small rusty blob against the dim chalky whiteness of the row of chickens behind her on the roost pole. Don't you do it the man said to the bobbing little hen, if you fly down, they all come down. And that's exactly why I got up way before dawn to clean this hen house. I didn't want any chickens underfoot. The little hen gathered herself, peered eagerly toward the sound of his voice. Not that either, the man warned her. Don't you dare try to fly to my shoulder. I'll get them all started. No, it'll get them all started. And I've got to have more time with this floor. Golly, it's all ice. I didn't realize I could get so cold enough in here to freeze under a foot of straw. I swept along the chickens on the roost. Ice under straw. Gosh, if it got cold in here, it'll be a wonder if some of you didn't freeze your comb or toes. He observed to himself. No. Stay there, he ordered the little red hen. Just close those wings, and I'll close my mouth, so you won't have to try to find me by the sound of my voice. He began scraping the ice with a spade. But as he stopped to reach under the roost to scrape at a suburn, patch of ice there, the little hen stepped off the roost and onto his stooped back. The man jerked air kick. Erect. Erect. See, that means he jerked up straight. He stood up straight. All right. The little hen ran up his back and balanced herself on his shoulder. Oh, you, you would think of that. Well, if that's where you've got to be, 
Then hang on. I'm going to get all this ice and dirty straw off the floor. He shoveled out the window before the rest of them came down. The little red hen shifted on the man's shoulder, came close to his cheek, excited by the sound of his voice. You'd be even more excited if you knew it was spring outside. The man told her, it's hard to believe in here. It's all winter and ice in this coop. But spring came in the night. Honest, the little hen started nibbling his cheek. But the man began scraping at the stubborn ice again. The little hen clunk fiercely. She did what? Clung fiercely to his shoulder, balancing herself the best she could. At least the man finished scraping the ice and shoved it to the dirty bedding straw that he piled before a window. Now come see, he told the little hen. He clambered over the straw pile and pried the window out of his casing, set it against the wall slowly to give a little to give the little hen time to change her position. He leaned far out of the window of the window. See spring came in the night. Feel it all soft and warm and wonderful, and it's here to stay. The little hen on his shoulder. Outside the window stood absolutely still, and the soft spring warmth had come to the land, and the night became welling up to her from the ground far below. She flapped her wings. The man laughed softly. If you could crow now, would you crow? Wouldn't you? If you could crow now, would you crow? If you could crow, now you would crow, wouldn't you? Oh. Okay. Hey, let's let them all know it's spring. Let winter out of the coop and spring in. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Take all the windows out and let the whole first wonderful day of spring come into the coop. It had taken hours, but now the floor of the hen house was dry and clean fanned to dryness by the breezes that came warmly through the row of open windows. And now the man came with crisp, clean, new straw. He dumped it, scattered, he dumped it in scattered mounds over the floor, and immediately the waiting flock attacked the mounds. The hen house rustled with the crispness of new straw. And the sun came out. Sunlight suddenly glistened on the gleaming straw. The whole hen house became still busier. The flock turned the straw and spread the straw. Straw sprayed and straw flew. The little red hen was right in the midst of the digging, kicking, scratching white flock, digging herself a hole, almost burying herself in straw. Only the rooster stood idle amid his hard-working flock. But the sun was out. The sun was rising in the sky. Importantly, the rooster strode across the floor, hopped up to a window sill, filled his chest, and crowed a mighty crow to crow the sun up in the sky and the sunlight into his busy hen house. The little hen poked her head up from the hole she had dug and looked at the crowing rooster. 
She thoughtfully looked from the rooster in the window sill to the high row of nests that rose against the end wall of the hen house. She started to dig again, but then she hurried through the loose straw to the nests. The time had come to lay an egg. Ignoring the rustling busyness all about her and the glory of sunshine that the rooster had crowed into the yellow straw, the little hen flew up to the highest perch before the top row of nests. The time had come to lay an egg. It was a proud thing to lay an egg, a proud and important thing. But after the endless cold winter, it was so long since the little hen had laid an egg that she had all but forgotten which one of the nests in the top row of nests was her favorite. She nervously ran back and forth on the high perch, trying to remember where she must lay her first egg of spring. Suddenly, the little hen remembered. It was the last nest in the row. She scurried to the end of the perch, hustled into the nest. She fussed with the straw in the nest, picked up single straws, and laid them beside her just so. She felt something hard and cold under her, tried to wriggle it out of her way, but then she remembered it was her nest egg. With her bill so tenderly hooked, a tiny frosted light bulb from under the straw tenderly tucked it under her. Hang on a second. With her bill, she tenderly hooked a tiny frosted light bulb from under the straw, tenderly tucked it under her. It was cold and dusty, and it had a brass socket, but the little hen loved her nest egg, loved to lay her brown egg beside the little white light bulb, for then it almost seemed as if she'd laid two eggs. The little hen was all settled. The light bulb was beginning to get warm under her. She sat quietly looking out over the busy hen house, but there came the man. Instinctively, the little hen ducked deep down in the nest because laying an egg was now, and for all time, an important, secret, private thing. But she secretly watched the man. Suddenly she sat bolt upright. The man was prying at a little slide door in the wall just above the floor. Now he pulled the slide way up and there it was, a square opening in the wall. And the little hen remembered across the long winter that from that opening a ramp led down from the high hen house to the barnyard below. It spelled freedom to the little hen, freedom in spring, freedom to go up and down the long ramp, freedom to roam. A great excitement stirred in the little hen. A great excitement stirred down below among the whole white flock. White hens eagerly crowded again around the man and the new opening he had made in the wall. White heads and necks poked toward the opening, but pulled back again. None of the chickens seemed to dare to be the first to go down the long ramp to freedom. They clustered around the opening, nervous and uncertain. The big rooster stayed well behind the huddle of nervous hens. At that exciting moment, the little hen's egg came. She hastily fluttered from the nest to the perch, but then, in spite of her eagerness to get to the opening in the wall, she had to cackle out the proud news of her egg, her first egg of spring. She ran wildly along the perch, cackling and shouting her announcement to the hen house below. The rooster on the floor began hoarsely cackling with her. The huddled chickens, for the moment, forgot the opening in the wall, started cackling in chorus along with the rooster. The little hen cackled back. The man clapped his hands to his ears. Quiet, he yelled above all the shrillness. Please, a little quiet. One egg has been laid, and all of you act as if she laid a grateful. He walked over to the nests and the cackling, pacing little hen. So you laid an egg and you're proud. Well, I'm proud of you too, but still it's only one little brown egg. You didn't lay a dozen. 
And you didn't lay that light bulb. So shall we calm down? Anyway, I've got things for you to do. All these high-strung white hens, they want to go down the ramp. They're crazy to go outdoors, but they don't dare. And that rooster's just as scared of all the newness and bigness outside. So shall you and I show them the way down the ramp? He carried the little hen to the opening, got down on his hands and knees, reached out as far as he could, and set her down on one of the cross pieces nailed on top of the ramp to give the chickens a toehold for climbing up and down the steep slant of the ramp. But the little hen suddenly had difficulty getting her toes to clutch the thick cross piece on which he had set her. She flapped her wings and tipped and teetered. Now don't you get nervous and jittery and excited like the others, the man said at the opening, scolded her. He once more placed her squarely on the cross piece and waited for her to clamp her toes around it, then withdrew his hand. The little hen stood alone on the high ramp. She peered timidly at the ground far below her. Her toehold suddenly shifted. She cocked her head, stared desperately at her toes. She lifted one foot, trying for a better hold, trying to dig her nails into the soft wood of the cross piece. They wouldn't take hold. Suddenly, with a queer choked off squawk, she tipped forward and tumbled down the long slant of the ramp. She wildly beat her wings to slow her fall, but she fluttered and stumbled and slid all the way down the ramp. She managed to land upright, but she landed in the middle of a mud puddle at the foot of the ramp. She stood absolutely still, peering down at her feet in the mud. At the top of the ramp, The man scrambled up off his knees and hurried down the stairs to get to the little hen. But now that the little red hen had gone down the ramp in whatever clumsy, frantic manner, the first white hen got courage also to go down the ramp. Behind her, the rooster and the whole flock came streaming. But they went no farther than the little hen. They crowded around her in the mud puddle. Weary and unsure and nervous, the rooster and all the flock kept their eyes away from the bigness and brightness around them, stayed in a huddle, stupidly staring at the little hen in their midst. The man came to stand behind the crowded flock. He leaned over the white chickens. Don't tell me your first step into freedom and you got your toes stuck in the mud, he joked with the little red hen. He stooped and reached out to pull her out of the mud. But as he stooped over them, the whole nervous huddled flock exploded up around him in a thunder of wings, scattered wildly in all directions, scuttled all over the barnyard. The man stared at it in startled surprise. Only the little hen remained in the mud puddle. Why, all I did, I just stooped over them. The amazed man said to the little hen. He stooped once more to pick her up. Something big black slid under him. The man snatched up the little hen, jerked erect, gaped at a big black dog that came creeping, almost swimming through the mud puddle. The dog pushed his head between the men's feet, lay trembling and silent. The man stepped back from the dog. So you're what scared them. They saw you coming. But where did you come from so suddenly? The dog squeezed himself ahead, crawled between the man's feet in the same swimming crawl. The perplexed man looked at the dog to the little red hen he was holding. Well, what do you want of me? He started to say to the dog. Suddenly, he jerked his eyes back to the little hen. The little hen had no toes. All her toes were gone. In sorrowful silence, the man looked at the little hen's toeless feet. I was afraid it would happen, 
all that ice under a foot of straw, he said at last. One of those cold nights of winter you froze your toes, didn't you? And now they just came off. Well, but it didn't hurt. He sort of comforted himself. And the little hen. These past weeks, they just turned to wood, didn't they? And now they came off in the mud. But you didn't feel a thing, did you? It didn't hurt. The little hen twisted in the man's arms, looked perkily up at his talking lips, tried to nibble them. No, the man said, it didn't hurt. At the sound of the man's soft words, as he talked to the little red hen, words on words, the dog wriggled between the man's feet, trying to dare to wag his tail, trying to dare to look up at the man. His tail quivered, but he couldn't quite look up. The dog's humble actions made the man aware of him again. Look at him, he said to the little hen. He acts as if there isn't a bone in his body or a brain in his head. You'd think he was jelly. But just from hearing me talk to you, he's put one idea in that brain of his. He figures I'm a pushover and that I'm going to give him a home here. He bent down to the dog. That's what you thought or hoped, didn't you? Just because of all my talk, how could you know that I've got this crazy habit of talking to animals? But you can stop hoping. You can't stay here. He turned to the little hen. No toes, just bare knuckle bones. Now how are you going to manage? He thought and thought. Golly, what a time you picked to come, he told the dog. What a hopelessly poor time. Isn't it queer, though, he said to himself and the little hen, for him to come just at the exact moment your toes came off, and just after you'd laid your first egg of spring. Why, it was like that too last year, when that pack of dogs came. You were laying your first egg then, too. You'd stolen away somewhere in a clump of weeds to lay your first egg, and so you escaped the slaughter. The only one those dogs didn't destroy. One little red hen left from a whole red flock. And now with no toes, there isn't much left of you, is there? He impatiently turned to the dog. And now you come along. Oh, I know you had nothing to do with this. She froze her toes weeks ago. But isn't it queer you come along just at that moment? He stood for a while as if going over the odd idea that had jumped into his head. It seemed to make up his mind. Up, he said to the dog. I may be a pushover, but not for dogs, and not after what they did to that red flock. And I am right now taking you for a long ride to get you as far away from here as I can. Come along. He turned away, and with the little red hen on his arm, strode out of the barnyard and toward an old car parked in the drive behind the house. Behind him, the dog obediently got up, dragged himself on his weak, hopeless legs after the man. The man got in the car, then first noticed he still held the little hen. Hey, forgot about you in all my fretting over that dog. Maybe it's just as well you come along. With all your toes gone, you now, you are now so different, I don't know what the rest of the flock might do to you. This way you'll be safe from them while I decide what I have to do with you. He placed the little hen on the seat between his legs, opened the door of the other side of the car, and patted the seat. In timid misery, the big dog crawled up to the seat flowed up to the seat as if there weren't a bone in his body. The man slammed the door shut and started the car. The dog, trying to make himself small and flat on the seat beside the man, almost put his chin on the man's leg. He nervously jerked his head back. The car started down the driveway. The little red hen perked her head up inquisitively, looking over the rounding of the man's leg at the dog. The dog lifted his hopeless eyes 
to the little hen. His eyes stayed fixed on that little hen.